What's up guys, Vince Blaze here with Adventures Within Media. Hope you guys are doing well. I know it's been a minute since my last video, but uh, we're here to change that today. And today we're actually gonna be reviewing a tripod. So we are reviewing the small rig AD1 something. I don't know, I'll put the title somewhere on the screen, but it's basically small rigs latest tripod. And it actually became a pretty popular tripod. I've seen it in three different locations within the last two months, and it only released about three months ago. So it's pretty impressive. Um, and I mainly think it's because of the price point because they came out of the gate pretty inexpensive, pretty affordable for a tripod and for what it actually offers. So today I'm gonna go in through sort of what are the things I liked and noticed about the tripod itself. And there's sort of issues that I think could be concerning to someone who might be wanting to purchase this and provide you guys with a little bit more insight on its usability. So without further ado, uh, let's get right into it. So I run my own business through Adventures Within Media. I also work part-time at another videography company and we do a lot of corporate shoots, we do a lot of talking heads, we do a lot of face cams, sort of like the YouTube stuff. Uh, I also run weddings and run and gun shoots and some short films as well. The main reason why I purchased this tripod was because I had a main tripod, which is the Manfrotto tripod, uh, which is being used right now to shoot this video. And I needed a second tripod. I was using a photography tripod that I use for travel when I want to do stills and stuff like that. But even with a DSLR with a big 70 to 200 lens, for example, it can get quite heavy and sort of um, be unstable for most shoots. And so I wanted something a little bit more stable, but something that was still light for a B cam setup. My work has also purchased this recently after I recommended it to them. We had an FX6 and we had a big Tesla tripod for that main camera but we also wanted a better B-cam tripod for the FX3. And so to recap this all before going into it, I think that the main purpose of this tripod is really for B-cams and smaller cameras. It's not really meant for bigger setups as you'll see later on in this review. As I mentioned earlier, Small Rig released this and it came out of the gate uh, with a sale on it. So it was very affordable. Another reason why I purchased this tripod was the price. Uh, Small Rig is really well known for providing a lot of affordable but decent quality a gear and so I decided why not this might be the move to be able to get something that I can use on an everyday shoot. So let's get into the technicalities of sort of the tripod and my thoughts overall. So just transportation. I think any tripod, moving it from one location to another, moving it from one spot to another while you're shooting, I think is very important. If it's very clunky, if it's very um, difficult to use, that will drastically affect the kind of shoots that you want to bring it on. For example, I don't bring this Manfrotto shoot on shoots for YouTube videos because it's way too clunky to use. So this tripod, the small rig tripod is, I would say it's fairly light. It's uh, It folds out very nicely, the legs come out, no issues at all. It also comes with, typically in any other tripod, a bag to carry it around with. It is a little bit difficult to fit into that bag, but most of the time there's no issues. It also comes with a uh, cover for the fluid head on top, which I've never seen on any other tripod before. Uh, which is great because it adds that little layer of protection, but it's also a little bit annoying because it's one more thing to add on to when you're putting away the tripod. I went on multiple shoots with this, so I was able to use it for a couple of shoots just to be able to um, put a couple of videos on YouTube or my job. We used it on quite a few shoots here and there. And so moving it around from location to location was very easy as I just mentioned, but also moving it from one spot to another with the camera on uh, may not be the safest way to do it, but sometimes you gotta run and move quickly. The tripod's lightweight allowed us to move very quickly and efficiently throughout the shoot. Now, when it comes to sturdiness, when you purchase any gear, typically the more you pay for it, the more quality you're gonna get out of it. So this is, as I mentioned, a very inexpensive tripod not to say that it's cheap by any means but there are definitely some things that I noticed compared to other tripods that I think could improve so we did test this as I mentioned for a YouTube video and I really decided to push this to the limit to see what kind of uh, gear you could use it on so I used my black magic we ended up shooting a, a little video for YouTube, which you guys can check out. I'll put the link in the description. Um, it was edited by my little intern, Tori himself. Uh, this is his first video that he's ever edited on our channel so far um, and turned out pretty good. If you guys want to check it out, you can. But we used the Blackmagic 6K with a monitor with almost a, a massive rig. And I know you typically wouldn't necessarily use that. It might be even over the weight limit that the tripod offers, but I just wanted to really push that tripod to the limit to see if it's actually usable and what kind of scenarios you could actually use it in. It maybe, it highlighted a lot of the, like, the different quirks and different issues would come out and pop out a lot more. 
than when I was using it with like an FX3 or just a Canon EOS R as we are right now. So mainly the fluid head again is not necessarily of the highest quality. It's not something you'd see on a Manfrotto or a Schechler uh, tripod. It's not of that caliber obviously. It, it gives you, provides you basic functionality to be able to move it up and down. Um, but I did find there was quite a few issues with it. So there's no knob on it for you to be able to actually adjust the strength of it. There is one on the side which allows you to adjust the tilt. Uh, speed, but it's obviously not at the level again of a, a high quality tripod. I think that also um, this, the different parts would start to unscrew as we were using it. Just when we'd be turning it or like using the tripod head for some reason, it would just start to unscrew as a little bit loose. Um, and I found that a little bit unnerving. I don't know if again, if it was due to the weight of the camera that was on there. And yeah, just overall, it created a little bit more stress in my head when we were trying to use it um, on shoots, making sure that everything wasn't moving. So the camera plate actually does come with a neat little uh, hex tool. So that's really useful because you can use that tool to tighten the plates onto the camera itself. So the tool is actually really useful. I did find that even though I would really tighten it really hard on the heavier setup again, it was starting to come loose. And so that was a little bit of an issue because whenever we'd move the camera again, some of the parts would move. The, the plate would get loose, the fluid head would start to get loose. Um, I also find that the actual knob to tighten the plate onto the tripod, it's a little bit janky in the sense that it won't work all the time. You have to like sort of press the inside of the latch in order to reset it at the beginning every time. Otherwise the plate doesn't fit properly and you, when you're trying to screw it on, it doesn't always feel like you're all the way at the end. That basically just created a lot more uncertainty in my head and a little bit more stress, but it also added a little bit more time to the whole shoot, every single shot, because I had to double check everything as we were moving around. At one point, um, the plate was actually so loose that it actually almost just dropped my camera. I had tightened it hard enough. I don't know what happened, either it got loose or it wasn't allowing it to or it was stuck. So there's just little quirks like that that might bother you. So you just gotta really check, double check if you're using this tripod. But again, it might be due to the fact that we were really using a heavier rig on this one, which you're not really meant to. Lastly, the legs were stable for the most part. They did the job. Again, some balance issues due to the fact that we had a heavier camera on that setup. But when we were using on the EOS R or with the FX3, there's no issues. At work, we've also used the camera, the FX3, with a prompter on it. And there's no issues, obviously, as long as you're not moving it too, too much. And overall, the legs are just very straightforward to use, just as you expect any tripod legs come in and out, and there's no issues really there. One of the concerns, though, about the legs is that it is latched on to the bottom of the legs for the centerpiece of the tripod that's holding all three legs together. And unfortunately, that is hard screwed in. And so it's very difficult for you to unscrew that. And so you can't really bring your tripod extremely low. You'd have to unscrew everything, which you likely wouldn't do. Um, and so it doesn't really have a way of lowering itself. So just keep that in mind for shoots for lower cameras, um, then you might need something else to be able to uh, to allow for that kind of shot to take place. So to wrap this all up, my overall thoughts on the tripod are exactly sort of the purpose that I was aiming for it to serve. I, I think that it's best suited for a B cam, a small DSLR setup, uh, maybe a small mirrorless camera like the FX3. I think that's when you'd best use it. I don't think that you should overly rig this type of thing. I think you really need it for a small little setup. It's meant for like running gun types of shoots, like if you're shooting a wedding or uh, YouTube videos like this one, definitely that's probably a really good tripod. Uh, it's sturdy, um, it does the job done, it's really light. Um, and yeah, it offers basic functionality, again, with just some minor quirks that you kind of work around. But for the price, obviously, I think that it's a given. Um, as I mentioned earlier, if you want to buy quality, you pay for quality. And so um, some of these things come with uh, pros and cons. But overall, I think that it's a really good tripod. I'm gonna continue using it uh, for running gun shoots. My work, we've been using it extensively with the FX3 in the studio, uh, in a controlled environment, obviously. So it can be very useful and I would recommend it if that's the type of shoots that you guys are going on. It could be a little bit overkill if you guys are thinking about using it for photography, but again, if you are using bigger lenses, say for example, a 70 to 200, the rig can start to get a little bit heavier. And so if you need something that's a little bit more stable, it might be worth checking out and using it. If I were to rate this overall on uh, five stars, I'd probably give it a 3.5, just because again, some of those quirks are a little bit um, unnerving and unsettling when you're on set. 
But overall, um, those are my thoughts on the tripod. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Hopefully you guys learned something and hopefully it's gonna help you make a better purchase decision on the tripod. Thank you guys for watching this video. You guys can always leave a thumbs up, leave a comment if you've had your experience using this tripod. If I've missed something, feel free to comment down below. And if you have any questions also, you can leave a comment and I'll try to answer them as much as possible. But otherwise, that's it for the video. Thank you so much and we'll catch you guys next time. Cheers. Tori's thoughts. Let's do that. Let's do that. Um, Sam, what's one thing that you really like? Okay. The tripod is really easy to maneuver when you have the camera actually on there. The fluid head cover made it a lot more difficult. Uh, no, hold on. Um, <coughs> I can clear my throat. Hold on.